Now we come to this 11th chapter in the great sin of David. And here, of course, is where the enemy moves in and where the enemy finds fault. And I think very candidly, he has a right to find fault of this man, David. And we're going to look at it. I'll look at this actually in depth. And we want to face right up to the fact what David has done. God doesn't say it's not sin. God's going to call it sin. And David will be punished for it. That is something folks seem to forget. And we'll see how David responded to that. Now I'm coming to chapter 11, verse 1, and reading. And it came to pass, after the year was expired, at the time when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him in all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But David tarried still at Jerusalem." Now, we have something here that I think is quite interesting to note. It was at the time of the year when kings went forth to war. In other words, in that day, there was an open season on each other, like there's an open season today on birds and animals. A certain season, you can shoot them. Other seasons, you cannot. But after all, isn't that true even in modern warfare today? When they're having the monsoons, had the monsoons in Vietnam, why the war was, as the commentator said, slowed down, which actually meant it came to a standstill because it was absolutely a bog in the swamps and the rain kept the planes out of the air, so it was practically a standstill. And then, after the monsoons, it opens up again. So this may be a great deal more modern than we think that it is. The weather in that day had a great deal to do with it. Unfortunate thing is that in the two world wars that we had, probably the greatest suffering in Europe was the suffering during the winter from the weather rather than from the enemy. As we read many times during World War II, it was the weather that was the big enemy and actually the one that hindered more than any other. But they attempted to carry it on. But at least in David's day, there was just a certain season for warfare. Maybe they were civilized and maybe a little more civilized than we are. They at least recognized there was a time that you could have comparative peace. Now, it was at this time, and David sent Joab to fight the children of Ammon, but David tarried still at Jerusalem. Now, this was unlike David. You wonder why. And I only have a suggestion to make. I'm of the opinion that David, having built his palace, found it very comfortable. It was quite different from the cave of Adullam. If you want to compare the cave of Adullam, where David spent his youth with this particular palace that was built for him, there was quite a difference. There was luxury, and there was great comfort. And I'm of the opinion that David loved Mount Zion, that David wanted to hang around Jerusalem. This is the thing that's trapped so many men and women, for that matter. Actually, our prosperity today has become a curse to us, and our comforts have become a curse to us in this nation of ours. David tarried still in Jerusalem. That was his first mistake. He should have been out yonder with his men, and ordinarily David was with his men. But he stayed in Jerusalem. He's in the wrong place at the right time, or the wrong time, let's say. 